Just wanted to do a quick follow-up video on this L-match antenna coupler. I've described it before, there are 16 inductance ranges. Possible because I'm using four switches, switching inductors of 1, 2, 4 or 8 microhenry. So, a bit like a binary number, you can put them in and out and have inductance up to 15 microhenry in 1 microhenry steps. The variable capacitor used has a maximum capacitance of around 220 picofarad. So far so good, but what about if you want to get more capacitance to match a wider range of antennas, particularly on 80 meters? Well, you could substitute a bigger variable capacitor, but there's not much room. Another possibility is adding another switch in parallel with the variable capacitor to switch in a fixed capacitance of say 220 picofarad. Then you'd have a range going up to 440 picofarad. That's fine, but what if you have no room to put in the extra switch or you just don't want to? A box like this with switches sticking out this side is fine, but if they're sticking out this side as well, then it becomes a bit bulkier and more fragile. Not so good for portable QRP gear. That's where a center off switch comes in. At first sight, it looks like any other double pole, double throw switch. Although in this application, it doesn't have to be double pole. Just single pole would be okay. But the important thing is the center off. There are actually three switch positions. In the bottom position here, you are connecting from the center to the top contact. In the top switch position, you're connecting from the center down to the bottom contact. That's the case with most, though not all, switches. Slide switches in particular, when you have the actuator this way, then you're also bridging the two contacts in the same direction that the actuator is set. Back to this special toggle switch, and here we're in neutral position. That means the center pin is not in contact with either side. That can be very handy for this particular project. Here's our second, more versatile coupler circuit. I'm using the same inductors, 8 microhenry, 4 microhenry, 2 microhenry and 1 microhenry, except they're in a different order to the original before. I'm also using the same switches for the first three inductors. However, the last inductor is what I'm using this special switch with. You have three switch positions. The top here is where you're shorting out the one microhenry. The middle position is where you've got the one microhenry in circuit. And the lower position is where you've still got the one microhenry in circuit, but you've got increased capacitance. Instead of just the variable capacitor that goes up to a maximum of about 220 picofarad, you've also got this in parallel. So you've got a capacitance that you can vary between about 230 and 440 picofarad. If that's too much, then you just flick the switch to the middle position where that capacitor is out. Why could that be useful? There are some bands and antennas, for instance 3.5 MHz with certain lengths of N-fed antenna, that 220 picofarad might not be quite enough capacitance to properly load the antenna. In that case, you'll be glad that you've got a bit of extra capacitance and that you can do it without having to fit a bigger variable capacitor or an extra switch. So there we have it, a very quick idea of how you can get a greater range of antenna matching impedances by increasing the range of capacitance that your antenna coupler can operate over even if you don't have a very big variable capacitor. And you can do it without adding an extra switch or even drilling an extra hole in the box. If you'd like to know more about antenna couplers like these, have a look at my ebook, Hand Carried QRP Antennas. Visit my website, vk3ye.com, or search the title on Amazon.